Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Avernos. In today's video, I will be showing you how you can prepare your data to use in the machine learning algorithm. We'll cover dealing with missing data using data imputation, we'll deal with standardizing your variables, and we'll also deal with one-hot encoding or encoding your independent variables. So we'll start by importing our data, but to do that we need to import pandas, and we'll use the alias pd for that. Pandas has a default setting in which it limits the number of rows shown in your data frame. So we'll do pd.setOption display.maxRows. And we'll just pass in 100, even though our data set isn't that large. We want to pass in a number that's larger than our data set so that we'll be able to see more rows. And now we can actually read in our data. So we'll use the pandas read CSV function. And I'll be using some mock income data. And then I'll just use the head function so we can look at the first five rows of our data. So you can see we have experience, the degree this person has, their age, and their income. And an example like this, income will be our dependent variable, which is what we're trying to predict. And we'll be able to use their experience, degree, and age in order to do that. So the first thing we'll do is train test split our data. And the reason why we'll do this before we deal with missing data or before we standardize our data is because in the real world you won't have your training data yet because that's going to come in later and so you also don't want any data leakage from your tra testing data going into this process and so we want to separate our training data from our testing data we'll process our training data because when we actually have a production machine learning algorithm our testing data would not be available so to train test split our data from sklearn that model underscore selection. We'll import train test split. And we want to separate our independent variables from our dependent variable. So we'll set capital X equal to data I lock, which just means index location. And by default, it will give you all the rows. And so we'll pass in a colon, which is just signifying we want every row because we're not specifying a start or a stop. So by default, it will give us all the rows and we want to get everything from the first column, so index zero, up until, but not including the last column, which we can refer to from the right side using index negative one. And then we'll do a similar thing to get our dependent variable. We'll get all the rows, but this time we only want the last column, so we only want index negative one. And then we can use our train test split function. We can do x train, x test, Y train and Y test and set that equal to train test split and we'll be splitting our X and our Y. And then we can run that. And now we'll have our training data and our testing data. So let's say we have missing data. So how can we see if we actually have missing data or not? The first thing we'll do is check that. So we'll use our X train and there's an is and a function which will return true or false if a value is null. And we'll just sum. So this will just add up all of the null values inside of our training data and let us see for each column how many missing values do we have. So we can run that. We can see we have two missing values in our experience column and our testing data. And then we can paste the same thing and we'll check our testing data. You can see we have one missing value in our experience column. And there's multiple ways you can deal with missing data. The first one I'll show you is how you can drop rows with missing data. And so we'll use a pandas function to do that. So we'll use the drop na function. And the first thing we'll pass in is how. How do we want to drop these rows? Do we want to drop rows that are missing any values? Or do we only want to drop rows that are missing every value? Or do we only want to drop rows that are using that are missing values in certain columns? And I'll show you how to deal with all of those examples. And first we'll just start by dropping rows in which any of our data is missing. So for how, we'll just pass in any, and we'll set in place equal to false. So what does in place do? In place is a parameter, it's a Boolean value that you can pass in to let the function know if you want to do this operation on your data frame and essentially save that data frame, or you can set in place to false, in which it will leave your original data frame alone and return a new data frame. 
So if I wanted to set this equal to some value, let's say I just want to set that equal to test, then I would want in place to be false because if in place were to be true, then it would do the original operation on this original data data frame, and then it would not return the value. So test would actually just be a blank object. So I'm just using this as an example. So we say in place to false and run that. And now what we'll do is we'll copy this and just look at the shape of our data. Because you can see here we have 22 rows and four columns. Let's look at the shape of our original data. We had 25 rows and four columns. So you can see we lost three rows. And we know that from up here, we have a total of rows that have three missing values. So we're dropping all of the rows that have missing values in this example. Now let's say we only want to drop rows if every value in that row is missing. So we can copy this. We'll get rid of shape for now because we just want to do the operation. And we'll change this how from any to all. So now this will only drop rows that are entirely blank. And so let's say we do that and look at the shape. You can see we have all 25 rows because there are no rows in our data set in which every column is blank. Now let's say you want to only look at a certain subset of variables. You can use the drop na for that also. So we can do data.drop na. And we'll pass in the subset, which takes a list of columns on which you want to do the operation over. And you'll also have how. We'll just use how equals any for now. And in place, we'll set that equal to false. And for subset, you can just pass in the names of the columns themselves. So let's say we only want to drop a row if experience or a degree column has any blanks and so we can run that and let's look at the shape of this to see how many rows we drop you can see we dropped three rows because we're looking at experience degree if any of those have any blanks and we know the experience we have three rows that are blank if we change this to all it won't look at or if every row in the data frame blank it will only look at if experience and degree are blank, then we'll drop those rows. And we can run that and we don't lose any data because we know that degree has a value for every row. Let's say you have data with some missing values and you don't want to drop rows to have missing values, but what can you do there? Well, you can impute the missing values with the average. You can do this for numerical variables. And we'll do that using sklearn. So from sklearn.impute, we will import the simple imputer. And we'll also import numpy as np because we'll be using that in this example also. So first, we would like to create our imputer. So we'll just set that equal to simple imputer. And we'll pass in this missing underscore values field. And this is where numpy comes in the first time. So we'll set that equal to numpy.nan which will be the missing values we want to impute. If, let's say, 0 was your quote-unquote missing value, then you could just set that equal to 0. And for strategy, we want to impute with the mean, which is another word for average, so we'll just pass in mean. Now, we know that the only column we have with any missing values is the data uh, column. And so that's what we'll be working on. In the earlier example, I was doing those operations on the data data frame. In fact, it's better to do that on your X train data frame, because remember that original data frame has our testing data in it, and we don't want any information leakage from our testing data into our training data. For example, if we were to do this on the original data set, then values from the testing data would be used to calculate our mean. And we don't want that, because remember in production, you won't have access to that testing data. So we'll do x train experience equals imputer, and we'll do fit transform, which is the name of the function. And we need to pass in our experience column. And we need to call values and reshape it to give this function its expected input. And so we'll do negative 1, 1 which essentially converts our data into a column, which is what this fit transform function is looking for. And then we'll just look at our data afterwards. 
the issue was we passed in X train here and data here, so we just need to change that to X train. And then we'll also change this to X train and then rerun that, and it will be fine. Now what we'll do is we'll look at our X train and our experience column in particular, and we'll see if any values are, are still blank. So we'll just do is and a and run that. And we can say it's given us false for everything because none of the values are false because we imputed them. Now we'll talk about standardizing our variables. And you may not have to do this every time you do a machine learning algorithm. It depends on which algorithm you use. For example, in a regression, the regression model can adjust the coefficients associated with each variable. And therefore, standardization may not be that important. But if you're using a model in which having values that have different magnitudes can affect your model and give you different output, then you may want to standardize your variables and bring them into that same domain. So first we'll just look at our data. You'll see we have experience and age as our numeric variables. In this example, I'll just show you how you can standardize the age variable. And then it will be the exact same thing if you want to standardize another numeric variable. So from sklearn, we will import preprocessing. And we'll be doing this on our X train, remember. Because standardizing will actually involve the min or max or the mean of your variables. And so if you use this on your entire data set, then those variables will be influenced by your testing data, which once again we won't have in production, so we have to do this on our training data. I said we'll standardize age. Let's actually standardize experience instead. So we'll do X train experience equal preprocessing, which is what we just imported from sklearn, and we will scale our X train experience column. Then let's look at xtrain.head again at the end. Yeah, so you can see experience is now standardized. And so what this does is essentially the average value, let's say we had someone who had exactly the average experience. That value would be listed as zero. And then the closer they are to zero, the closer they are to the mean, and the more extreme the absolute value of this the farther they are from the mean. So you can see this value is close to 2, so this one was close to the mean in terms of experience, and these are farther away from the mean. Earlier in the video I said this is close to 2, I meant close to 0. But let's go ahead and look at the mean. So we'll do x train, make sure you have brackets, experience, and we'll just call it that mean. And we can see it's giving us this value, which is extremely close to 0. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and encode our independent variables, and we'll do one hot encoding. And I'll tell you what that means in a second, but first, from sklearn.compose, we will import our column transformer. And if you don't already have NumPy imported, then we'll import that as np. And then from sklearn preprocessing, we need to import the one hot encoder. We'll be using the column transform and one hot encoder to do our actual encoding. And so we'll create our column transformer, which of course is a column transformer class object. And we need to tell it what kind of transformations do we want to do and what can it expect. So we'll have brackets and then in quotes, actually we actually need parentheses also inside of our brackets. And then in quotes, we'll pass an encoder and then we'll have one hot encoder, and you also need parentheses after that. And then we'll also need to pass in the column that we want to perform this encoding on, which will be our experience column. What one hot coding does is it creates a binary variable for each class inside of the column that you're going to encode. So here we're doing degree, and we have multiple classes, PhD, no degree, bachelor's, and master's. And so it will create a binary variable for each column indicating whether or not the person has achieved that level of education. So the next thing we need to pass in is the index of this experience column. 
So we'll pass in the index of that column and make sure it's in brackets. And it's the first column, so we'll pass in zero. And now we can go outside of that square bracket, but still inside that last parenthesis. We'll add a comma and then do remainder equals pass through, which is just saying the rest of the columns in our data frame, just let them pass through because we want to keep them as part of our data frame because we'll still be using those in our model. So let's double check that. Yes, that looks good. And then we'll just take X train and set that equal to a, a NumPy array because that's what our machine learning model will be expecting. And we'll call the column transformer. So what we'll want to do is pass in the fit transform function and we'll run that on X train. And also earlier in the video, I said we should pass in zero here. The index is is one because degree is the second column of our data frame, not the first one. So you can rerun the column transformer to fix that mistake and then run that so we can see X train. And this is what you would want to pass into your machine learning algorithm, but we're just going to cast this back to a data frame. And let's see what X train looks like now. And now you can see we have multiple classes for each of the classes inside of our degree field. And we still have the other variables that we have. This is the transformed experience, and then we also have age. And that's how you can process a data set that you can now use in a machine learning algorithm. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload, and also comment saying you subscribe, and I'll try to like or heart all the comments. We have a machine learning series on our page where you can check out other videos in our machine learning series. And we also have a lot of videos coming in the future about programming in Python, machine learning, artificial intelligence, cloud computing and Amazon Web Services, and physical computing using Raspberry Pis. So we have a lot of great tech content coming in the future. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.